Uh, oh, way too early for any of this. All right. Uh, let's see what's going on in the world. Top stories, world. Let's take a look at technology. Hey, welcome back to RTOD. If you follow me on Twitter, and if you don't, you really should, as well as subscribe to this channel. You might have seen a couple days ago, I posted a video of my Commodore 64 reading modern articles on CNN. Uh, I got a lot of traction on this, got a lot of followers, a lot of interaction with people saying, hey, how did you do this? That, that's amazing. It really, it really impressed people that you can have a system this old accessing a modern website. Well, truth be told, I wasn't going to CNN.com. Uh, there's a BBS that really caters to that, and we'll talk about it. You can get you know, CNN, you can get uh, BBC, you can get Wired, and it takes those top articles and spits them out on your retro device through this BBS. And, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, because a lot of people want to be able to do this. Um, they've never accessed a BBS before. They might have been old enough to access a BBS before. I just kind of want to scratch the surface of what do you need to access the internet on older machines like these? Uh, and even if you don't have machines like this, what can you do to experience that? Um, and all of this is really thanks to the retro computing community. A lot of these solutions are just made by regular guys and gals that want to breathe new life into their systems. You know, just for example, I got a Raspberry Pi. It's a, you know, Pi 1541. That's where I access a lot of the software for my Commodore 64. I got a floppy emu back here for the Apple II GS, as well as a lot of really sweet stuff under the hood of that machine. I, I, I need to do its own video on my GS. But these devices, the, the hardware and the software that goes into this, is made by enthusiasts just like you. And that's what makes this community great. So let's take a, a little look into how do we access a BBS on our vintage machines. A lot of the BBSs I'm going to be showing you, you can access on newer systems using the browser you're using right now to watch this YouTube video. You don't need old tech to experience a BBS. But if you want that authentic experience, you're probably going to want to use a period correct system. I'm going to be showing two of the devices that I use to get my Commodore 64 online. These are by no means the definitive way to get a Commodore online. There are other peripherals that will do the same thing, as well as more devices for Apples or Amigas or older IBM PC compatibles. It really depends on the systems you're running and your budget and what works for your setup. I'll have some links in the description below of different ways to connect your vintage computers online or even drive emulators. But what I'm using is, this is the device that I get my Commodore on my home wireless network. And as I talked earlier, I have a Pi 1541. This is a Raspberry Pi with a hat on it that emulates a 1541. Uh, and it loads everything on an SD card. I, I made this little stand for it. It's not the best thing, but I printed it up and it, it works for me. Uh, as you see, the, the label's a work in progress. I'm still not happy with how that's looking on there, but we'll, we'll get a a full color label on eventually. But with these two, I can connect to the internet and I can use software to quote unquote dial in to the BBS. So we're gonna walk you through real time how I dial into a BBS. So you see right here, this is the Pi 1541 menu and I'm loading up CCGMS. I, I use version 2019, that's just what I have. I also have 17 and 21 on here. So we're gonna navigate to the .d64 and then CCGMS will load. Now this is all loading off of an SD card in my Pi 1541, but this is a cycle exact emulation. This is how long it would take to load from a 1541 if I was loading off of a real floppy disk. And I think that's what makes this such a very unique and authentic experience. 
So here we are, we are in the program. We've already connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, every time I turn my Commodore 64 on, it connects to the network. So right now I'm dialing into the Retro Campus BBS. Here you see the welcome screen. Now this is um, can be Italian or in English, so that's why we have both flags there. But this is the experience of it. We're loading each individual row as we go across. And like I said, this is real time. You're experiencing this the same speed that I experience it. So at this point, we can make our selection and we're going to go to news. So that's selection number two. And then we load our news portal. And you'll see a few different options, CNN, BBC, Wired, VCF. Some of these have better functionality than others. I haven't been able to get 2600 to work, but all you do is just press the number you want. And you see right here, I wanted to open up 2600. I used to subscribe to this. I, I love reading 2600 articles, but this never loaded. And I, I haven't had any luck with this, so I don't know if this was a failure on my side or maybe it's just not supported anymore. So if we go back to the main news menu, and this time we'll load up BBC, I've noticed the best results with BBC or CNN. Regardless which one you pick, CNN or BBC, you go to this main menu, if you will, and then you can sort down from different categories. Do you want top stories, different regions of the world, Africa, Asia, Europe, or business, health, education? Kind of emulates what would happen if you visited their homepage on a modern computer, and you'd have to type in the selection of what you want to look at. So we're looking at top stories. And this is definitely going to date this video down the road because we're looking at the Ukraine war, which at this point is 13, 14 days old. Um, but it starts reading you the headlines and then you'd hit the space bar and it would load the next headlines, pulling it directly, not directly, but pulling it indirectly off of the BBC site itself. I find this really relaxing and just uh, a lot of fun. Early on in the pandemic, when I was working from home, I kind of built this into my morning routine. And I'd get my coffee, I'd come up, power on the C64, and I would start reading the news. Or I would go on to one of my favorite uh, BBSs, the 13th floor, which we'll visit next. It was... Um, it was relaxing. It was a really enjoyable experience to be able to ingest news this way using my Commodore 64. So if we go back to the main menu, we're going to look at the games section. This is selection three. So we'll just type three in the keyboard and then it'll start loading our games menu. Uh, now, again, this is exactly the speed. There's no tricks here. I'm not slowing it down intentionally. This is the experience you would have if you dialed into this BBS or even if you used it on a modern browser and accessed it. So you see we have Tic-Tac-Toe, Connect 4, Magic 5, as well as our beloved text adventures. So if you want to experience Zork uh, outside of a CPM machine or other emulators, you can do it all here. So let's take a look at Tic-Tac-Toe. So I did cheat a little bit and uh, cut ahead to Tic-Tac-Toe being loaded because we do, I love that full color graphic over there, but it takes a long time for that to load. And this is what you get. You get your Tic-Tac-Toe grid, and all you do is type in where you want to put your first X. Uh, you just follow the grid. You can be A2 or 2A. The system's smart enough to differentiate it. And then after that, you're playing tic-tac-toe with the computer. There is one more feature I want to explore in Retro Campus, and that's the chat feature. Uh, once you select chat, then you're going to enter your handle. As far as I know, there's no way to verify it's not taken, and I don't know what happened if another RTOD was in the chat. 
but that really doesn't matter because I've yet to log in here at the same time as somebody else in the chat. I, I would love to. Maybe uh, maybe we can set something up in the comments in this video or uh, join me over on Twitter and we can try to have a time where we all log into PBS Chat 2.0 on Retro Campus. Uh, but once you're in, you can get a list of users and, of course, no other users are connected. So, um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe some of you guys in the, watching this, we can try to link up together and do a, a BBS chat one day. Like I said earlier, everything you do on the Commodore 64, you could do in your browser with this link. I'll have it in the description below. The last BBS we're going to look at is the 13th floor. Now, in my opinion, I, I think this is one of the more enjoyable ones and probably the most mature BBS. I, I know somebody who can correct me in the comments, uh, and, and that's fine because there's a lot of BBSs that I haven't explored yet. I am going to speed this up because um, the 13th floor has a long login sequence, uh, and you actually do have to log in. You get a username and password, um, but that, that's not bad. I say that like, oh, it's such a long sequence. It's enjoyable. It's, it's colorful. It changes. They actually change some of the images you see as you log into the 13th floor, um, and this is a really good experience. Uh, there's you know, a wall that you can go on and do your post. There's a file upload download section. Uh, there's a lotto that you can uh, wager credits. Uh, they don't count money or anything. It's just credits you get for logging into, into the BBS. Um, it, it's an experience, and it's something that I think we have lost as computers and the internet have evolved to what we have today. Sure, we have social networks and we have Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and, and all of that great stuff, but this is the beginnings of it. This was really how people communicated online, uh, you know, decades ago. And, and it's great that you can still experience a slice of it today. So the last thing we're gonna look at, and I'm gonna leave you with this to enjoy, is Telnet. Um, I'll have a link for this specific Telnet address in uh, the description below, but this is Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. The entirety of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope in glorious text-based animation. I, I remember when I first saw this, it was probably 1998, 99. Um, you know, I, I think I was still using 56K dial-up at the time, and, and this was awesome. I, I remember showing everybody at school because I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Um, and it still is. Once you get past the, the scrolling screen here, you're actually going to see text-based characters like you would in the movie. I got a couple minutes of this. We'll let you watch it. Like I said, the link will be in the description below so you can do this on your own machine. I hope you enjoyed this short little video, um, just some tips and tricks to get you on BBSing and making some of your vintage machines a, a little more enjoyable and a little more useful in your daily life. Uh, before I go, uh, I just want to say, you know, we've seen a lot of new subscribers lately to our YouTube, more followers on Twitter. Uh, we also have a Facebook and an Instagram, but most of our communication seems to be through Twitter. Um, for all of our new subscribers, thank you. For all of our old subscribers who keep coming back, thank you again. Uh, we're really seeing this channel grow, and um, I, I'm, I'm happy. I, I am really happy with the growth, uh, and, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So until next time, uh, stay safe, stay well, and enjoy a, a few minutes of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Help in uh, glorious text-based animation.